Hey guys, the new Space Wolf Codex has just been released and I'm going to walk you through my three favourite Warlord traits from the new book. If you would like to know every time I do one of these videos, please hit the subscribe button just below and the notifications bell so it gives you a notification every time one of these gets uploaded. Enjoy the following video guys! I'm going to run you through my best three Warlord traits now guys. So third for me is Warrior Born. Now, Warrior Born lets you fight first in the fight phase on your Warlord trait. It doesn't mean that if somebody charges you, you get to fight before them, because there's a paragraph in the back of the book that says units that got fight first ability, like charging, and units that got a fight first ability in built, the charging units still trump them. So, but basically what it does, it's, it's a free interrupt. That's what I like about it. But the reason why it's third on the list, guys, is because the deed associated with it is quite situational. You have to kill an enemy character with a melee weapon with this Warlord. So it's quite hard to get into an enemy character if your opponent is, like, shielding well and they know that that's your deed. So that's why it's third on the list and not second or first. Uh, but what happens, if you get that off, it means everybody in your army... With the, with the Saga, sorry. If you do the deed, you get the Saga. And then every core unit within range, within six inches of your Warlord, gets to fight first in the fight phase. It's really big because it means that everybody gets free interrupts then. So basically, if you get charged by five units, your opponent gets to pick the first one because it reverts to them. You, you choose going with them when it comes to fight first. So they'll get to hit you with the first unit they've charged with, but then you get to hit back with one, then they get to hit you, then you get to hit back with one. You just get a free interrupt after each sequence, which I think is really, really cool. So that's why that is third on the list. Now the second one for me is Wolfkin. The reason why I really like Wolfkin is it makes the character himself really good. The Warlord trait is so useful for that character. It means he always gains the benefit of Shock Assault for the purposes of charging. So basically, it doesn't matter if he's charged or he gets charged or it's the third round of combat and nobody's charged. He always gets the extra attacks from Shock Assault. And also it gives him plus D3 attacks for Shock Assault rather than plus one. So he's always going to get plus D3 attacks in combat. So if that's on a guy with a really cool, like, you know, Relic Weapon or a Power Fist or, you know, a weapon that does a lot of damage, then it could be really, really cool to always get an extra D3 attacks on your Warlord. So that's why that's number two for me. And the deed is also quite easy to do for it. It's just kill an enemy model with a melee weapon from this Warlord. It's really cool, you know, if he's if he's got like a Power Fist or a Thunder Hammer, he will kill a model. The first time he gets into something, he'll kill a model, which I think is really cool. And the minute he kills a model, the deed goes off, and then from the next turn, his Saga becomes active, and the Saga, the Saga of the Wolfkin, guys, is really, really cool. It means that everybody, uh, all Space Wolf core units, within six inches of your Warlord, then get the always get the benefit of the plus one attack from Shock Assault. So I think that's really cool. It means if somebody in your army gets tied for a second round of combat, they're still getting the plus one attack. So I really like that Warlord trait. But I mainly like it for the character himself because it get, makes him super, super killy. That's why I've taken that as a second one. And then number one, guys, number one for me, always has been, even in the past book and still is in the current book, is the Hunter. I think the Hunter Warlord trait is magnificent, especially like we're saying on a guy who's got a really cool weapon it lets him advance and charge and also it lets him fall back and charge which is really really powerful you know people think they've tied you in combat but you could just fall back and charge back in which is a really cool thing but the main thing is the advance and charge you know it means he can move 12 if he's got something like a jump pack let's him move 12 and advance and still charge after that and then the saga with it is incredible so his deed is successfully make a charge which I think is very, very easy to do when you want to get it off. So, you know, you pick your spots and you go for it. And then the Saga goes off. And from the next turn, all Space Wolf core units within six inches of your Warlord can all make a charge in a turn that they advanced. I think that's really, really cool. But it, it goes even further than that. It becomes even better for things like Thunderwolf Cavalry. So, as you'll notice, guys, the Warlord trait itself, it lets... The, the character that's got it, advance and charge, and also fall back and charge as their second ability. So what he does is he lets all core units within six advance and charge, but core units that have got the Swift Hunters ability, because Swift Hunters already lets you advance and charge, those units are eligible to make a charge in a turn in which they fell back. So like Thunderwolf Cavalry falling back and charging is massive. So I think that's got a lot of play to it, and that Warlord trait has been the one that's worked best for me, 
in the past book and I'm sure it will be the best for me in this book as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting my Space Wolves on the board guys. If you guys think there's another Warlord trait that's been working really well for you, please share it in the comments so everybody else can give it a go. Thank you for watching the video guys, I'll see you again in the next one.